Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today is another Sunday sew along. Today we are covering part four and the final part of our Itch to Stitch Upland Trouser sew along. Okay, before I get into this, I had mentioned at the very end of the video, I put a button and buttonhole on these pants. But I had said, um, I had mentioned that you could also do a hook and bar, and I'm like, I'll show you about that too. And then I totally forgot. I also forgot, <laughs> forgot to finish the top stitching on the top. You had to go back and do that, and I got ahead of myself and didn't realize it till like later when I was putting the pants on. I'm like, I did not finish the top stitching. So I did put a little blurb of text in there um, telling you to go ahead and do it there, but yeah. It's basically, these are my um, corduroy pair, but it's basically finishing off the line of stitching on, yeah, on this side with the shield. We, I forgot to do that last two inches to close off the facing. But this is what the hook and bar option looks like. I've got the bar on the underlap side and the hook on the overlap, and then it hooks together and you just get, you know, the cleaner finish there as opposed to the button and the buttonhole. So I have two pairs now with the button and buttonhole, and then this one with the, um, these need to be ironed. <laughs> and then they're, uh, they've been up in my closet because they've got put away for winter. Um, but um, the one with the hook and bar, which I think is a lovely little, it just makes it very clean looking. So that, I just wanted to show you that because I'd mentioned it and then did, forgot to show you. So today, we are putting the pants together, we are putting the facing in, putting that elastic in the top, um, which is such a clever idea, finishing off our zippers, um, doing the buttonhole, all that, finishing, hemming, finishing the pants. So um, it's a long one today, but God, I just love this pattern so much. It really is my favorite like trouser pattern. I'm pretty confident in saying that. <laughs> So that is what we've got for today. As always, leave any questions you have down below. I'm happy to answer those as soon as I can. Um, if you do enjoy this type of content and would like to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar. Link down below. Um, all the money from that goes right back into the channel, equipment, um, mostly equipment, some supplies, that sort of thing, software, that kind of stuff that is more heavily reliant on it, it goes more towards the sew-alongs and the tutorials. They're just a little more expensive for me to produce than the other videos. So, there you have it. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed the sew-along. Um, next week is going to be a tutorial, and I'm going to show you how I make bias tape, which is a little elementary um, when it comes to sewing, but I put it in, and I, I use bias tape quite a bit for hems. I used it for finishing off the facing here, and I realize that it's one of those things that some people just may not know how to do that. So I thought that'd be a good um, video to have on the channel just for me to refer people back to and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be showing you how I make my bias tape um, next week. So that is next week, and then we'll be delving into another sew along, and I'm not sure what that is yet, so <laughs> stay tuned. It's all excitement. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have. I hope you have enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, are we ready to assemble these pants? All right, so today um, we're going to need our front and backs, obviously. Um, we're also going to need the rest of the pieces. So our fly shield, um, which actually gets finished off differently than um, the other stuff, uh, the other zipper flies. And then our two facing piece, or our three facing pieces, one back on the fold and then the two front. And then we need, um, I'm going to finish off the... Um, bottom edge of my facing with bias tape, so you need bias tape. I was going to show you how to do this in this video, but then I decided that would make sense as, as a standalone video on how to make bias tape. I'm going to show you how to apply it, um, but because you could use store-bought very easily. Um, but this is half inch wide bias tape, which means it was one inch wide. Actually, I cut mine a little wider than one inch, just for turn of cloth. Um, one inch wide and then it gets folded in a quarter of an inch a quarter of an inch to make half inch wide bias tape so that's this is half inch single fold bias tape if it were double fold it would also have been folded like so and then pressed again that's double fold bias tape even though technically you have two folds it would make sense that this would be double fold but it's actually single fold <laughs> So there you have it. Um, but I'm going to do a video. Uh, the tutorial in between this and the next sew along is going to be how to make how I make bias tape. Just for anyone that's interested, um, thought it'd be a good video to have on the channel. So um, stay tuned for that if you do want to see how I actually make bias tape um, out of regular fabric. Okay, 
let's get started. So let's move all these pieces out of the way because we're actually not going to use these quite yet. You're also going to need your um, 3 eighths of an inch clear elastic. You could use quarter, but 3 eighths of an inch is um, better. It's just a little wider, a little easier to, to do. All right, so when we left off, we last week, we left off with... Um, we had done our welt pockets, but our backs were still two separate backs. So before we do anything, we're going to sew our backs together. I don't know why I didn't do that last week, but here we are. <laughs> okay, so we're going to sew our backs together. All right, sides together at the center back seam. I've got various and sundry scissors sitting here. Okay. All right. So we've got our half inch wide seam allowance. Also make sure you're at your 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Now that we've sewn that, I'm going to go and I'm going to finish my seam allowances together. I'm going to serge mine, but you can finish it however. And then you need to um, open it up and press it to one side. Also, I'm going to go ahead and serge my side seams, my outer seams, on both the front and the back because I want to press my seams open. I'm also going to, well, maybe I'll do that one together. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with the end seams I'm going to sew. When I sew those together, I'll finish those off together when I do the front and the back. But I do want my outer seams to be able to press open. So um, I'm going to serge this seam, center back seam, press it to one side, and I'm going to serge the out seams, the outer side seams, on both my fronts and both my backs. Um, both sides of my front and both sides of my back. And then I will meet you back here. All right, let's put our fronts and our backs together. There is our back. Now I'm going to throw the front right side together on top of the back. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start by doing the inseam first. I'm going to sew that and then um, serge it together and then press everything towards the back. All right, so I'm starting at the center front, center back seam where those meet. Popping a pin in there. And then it's just a matter of matching some notches. And the, um, a lot of times you'll notice that you'll need to stretch, usually it's the front side just so, or sometimes it's the back I think well you need to stretch one from the knee notch up to the the crotch for those to fit and that is just to help cup the body just a little bit better um, you see that a lot actually in pants patterns and also what I'm gonna do once we have done the inseam and once we have surged it, press it towards the back. I'm actually going to go ahead and pre-press my hem before I do the out seam because um, that'll just make everything easier. And I know that I want this length, sorry, that I want this length for my pants. So I know that I'm not going to have to try them on to a determined hem because I've made these enough times now, but just something. If you've made the pants a few times, it's something that does make things a little easier. All right, I want to sew with my back against the feed dogs. Let me flip that around. Okay, so I've got the front on top. Again, we've got half of an inch seam allowances. Okay. 
Okay, and off we go. Okay, so that is the end seam sewn. So I'm just going to take this to the serger, ah, serge the whole thing, um, and press everything towards the back, which is easy because your side, you know, your outer seams aren't done yet. So I'm going to do that real quick, and I'm also going to um, press my hems up, and you should have notches, yeah, notches down here that show you like where that is. I think it's an inch and a half. I'll measure it, but I'm pretty sure it's an inch and a half. Um, so when all is said and done, I'm actually going to fin when my pants are done, I'm going to finish off the hem with the serger and then just press it up the seam allowance and then we'll top, I'll top stitch it because that's what I want for these pants, but you could also blind hem it, um, stitch it if you'd like as well. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay. So my inseam has been sewn, serged, pressed towards the back. And like I said, I just went ahead and pressed a memory crease into my hems. Um, those obviously get unfolded for sewing the out seams, but I just want to, went ahead and did that. It'll just be easier and I still need to serge that, but it'll be easier at the end. Again, if you're testing the length before, you know, if you're first time making pants or what, these pants or whatever, you don't really need to do that because you may be making them shorter or longer or whatever. Okay. So what I'm going to do, your pants look weird right now. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. All right, so that is uh, my outs. Now we're going to do our um, out seams. So I'm just matching up my side seams. Why do I keep calling them out seams? They're side seams. Match those up. You probably have a couple of, well, I know you do, a couple of notches, although when I, you've surged, even though there's one. Sometimes those notches can be hard to find because it kind of pushes them closed again. Start here at the bottom. Match up my pressed crease. All right, where's my, there's my notch. Okay, just put a couple pins in. All right, doesn't really matter if you want to start at the top, start at the bottom. Just make sure your pocket pieces, mine's wanting to fold underneath itself, just make sure those are all behaving and where they're supposed to be. And we are going to sew this at half of an inch. Seam allowance. Again, this front pocket wants to be difficult, but we're not going to let it. There it goes.
there's one out seam. I'm now going to go, I'll do the other one, but I'm going to go ahead and press this seam open and then I'm going to go ahead and serge the bottom of my pants just because they're getting very hairy and I want to get that all um, taken care of. Um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and hem my pants now just so we're done. Obviously you can come back to that um, if you want to try them on before you do that. Also, you can, if you'd like, instead of sewing this at a regular stitch length, you can baste this seam now and carefully try on your pants. Make sure, though, um, that you stabilize the waistband before um, you do that because you could very easily stretch out that waistband. But yes, you could definitely do that now. Okay, I'm going to press these open, finish off the bottoms of my pants. And I'll meet you back here because I'm going to hem them real quick. And then um, we'll do the waistband. We're getting close, guys. Okay, so I have pressed my seam allowances on the sides open. And then it's a very easy just to fold up that <laughs> um, crease I'd already put in there. And then I have top stitched my hem. Obviously, you don't have to do this step yet. It is just what I'm doing. So you could totally come back to this. Um, especially, you know, if you were trying things on. Um, with the basting and all that kind of stuff. Ugh. Okay. But I'm just really quickly, see, it just flipped up just that easy and everything is in its place. So satisfying. <laughs> all right. I always like to start near the inseam. I don't know. It just is like it's inside the legs. So it's a little less obvious maybe. And I am feeling through the fabric. I can feel where that, um, oops where that um, surged line is. is done so that makes that easy um so just kind of a I don't know you're already down here so it's just kind of easy to go ahead and do that obviously you can do that at the end if you'd like okay let's turn our focus to the top of these pants um we need to undo our basting first I've not done that yet and we need to turn them right side out so go ahead and turn your pants right side out. I am so excited to put the, get these on my body. I tell ya. I have a feeling that I'm going to wear these pants so much. All right. So I'm just going to undo that basting that we did to keep all of this. in place it should be pretty easy I did have the back stitch back stitch function on though so all right okay so there's our fly and again you know things aren't sewn there um, because of where the facing's gonna go. So we can go ahead and unzip this. We'll chop off that extra, look how nice that looks. We'll chop off that extra um, zipper tape here in a little bit, but okay. So what we are going to do first is, um, do I wanna do that? Hold on, I'm thinking this through. We're gonna put our, uh, go ahead and sew our, um, elastic to the top of the pants but I'm trying to decide I think I don't want to sew that down okay all right so you don't really need anything measured out what I will say is this is my um, clear elastic I am going to pull out approximately my waist's worth I'm not going to cut anything but I am pulling it and stretching it because we really want to get, um, it'll stretch out. You want to get that first initial stretch 
and you can feel that it's pretty tight when you first go to stretch it. Um, so we're just kind of getting that out. Then it should be fine after that. The other thing I like about the 3 8 inch is that because it's thicker, it's a little more stable. All right, now we're gonna literally be putting this on with a straight stitch. I'm doing my 2.5. We are gonna be stitching right down the middle. I'm gonna put this extra stuff in my lap. Oh, I just dropped it, dang it. <laughs> well, that'll be a fun mess to pick up later. Cool. Okay, <laughs> jeez. It's like when the bobbins like unwind. All right, I'm gonna start, you know, we have this, this will be eventually sewn back like so. So I'm just gonna open this up and start this elastic in here. Oh, I mean, I don't think you can kind of pick where you want. Okay, so we are going to be sewing on our seam allowance, and I'm actually going to leave a little bit. We can trim it off, but I'm going to leave a little extra on the end here just to um, just to give me a little something to grip onto. So I'm going to be stitching this on the seam allowance that we will eventually sew on, which is a half of an inch. And as I go, I'm going to be sewing right in the middle of the uh, clear elastic and I'm just going to very slightly pull let's tack that down pull um, the elastic as I go not a ton but a little bit so the trick is <laughs> the trick is is that you are sewing at your half inch seam allowance trying to keep the uh, clear elastic in the somewhat close to the center of that seam line and slightly pulling the elastic at the same time. Hold on, everything is going wonky here. There we go. And we're sewing this on to the wrong side of the pants. I mean, I don't, I'm not pulling this hard, but you can definitely see that it's gathering up and that's okay because, um, once, and that's the other reason we can do this with a straight stitch because it is, we're stretching it as we sew. So when it goes to its regular width, hold on, make sure your pocket pieces, that's the bit that's not basted down. Um, it's just gonna, it's just gonna stretch to the width that the, um, or the length of the thread, so you're not going to pop stitches is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> and not very well. But even if it's gathering up like this, once it's on your body, it will pull flat and you will not be able to tell. What the elastic does is it just, you know, it's not in there to work as like you would think like an elastic for elastic waist pants. It is literally just in there to um, keep that seam line from stretching out and give it a little bit of elasticity so that if it does, you know, pull and stretch a little bit, it will pop right back to its um, regular shape, which is the whole point when you think about having spandex or elastane in fabric. I mean, it's just, you know, basically elastic thread that gets woven in with the, you know, cotton or whatever. And that's the whole point of it, is to bring everything back the way it's supposed to be in the end. I just thought that this was such a smart idea when I made these pants the first time. And it really does work. You don't really need to pull really all that much just because, and I'm pulling this out of the way. Um, because when you're sewing, it kind of stretches it for you. Okay, see? I mean, that's gathered up that waist, but it's okay. Because again, once it's on your body, you're not going to be able to tell. I'm just going to trim that off. I have a very large mess of clear elastic at my feet, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it is gathered that whole waistband up, but again, it's okay. Don't fret. That's what we want. All right, I'm going to set these aside, and I'm going to come back, and we are going to sew our facings, um, get the bias tape on the facing, finish off our fly shield, and then we'll get everything put on the pants. Okay, so now we're going to do our facing and get it all put together and sewn onto the pants. 
Um, okay, so we've got our front facing and our back facing. Again, I've added on to the center front part of my front facing just because um, I did not sew that dart. You should have one end, there it is. You should have one end that's got a notch that matches the side. The one without a notch is center front. Okay, so we are just gonna sew these side seams. Now, when you did your baste fit, if you decided that you needed to take the waist in a little bit, um, you're gonna need to do that same amount on your facing pieces. So don't forget, hold on, my, my uh, presser foot is loose. <clears throat> okay. Try this again. All right, half of an inch seam allowance. Both sides. Okay, I'm going to go and press these seam allowances open. And then we're going to come back and attach the bias tape to the bottom part of the um, facing. All right, let's attach our bias face or our bias tape. We're going to bind it. Um, you could go ahead and trim off a little bit because technically this gets folded under a half of an inch. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is because if I have excess hanging below the stitching line on my pants, I'm fine with that. Um, but if you want to trim off a little bit, you know, the half inch or whatever to make it um, accurate, you can do that. I'm choosing not to do that. I would rather have too much to make sure I catch everything. So I'm actually going to be sewing this. I'm unfolding one side and I'm sewing this, um, the right side of the tape to the wrong side. And I am, so when you're looking at your waistband, you notice that you've got a, a wider curve and then a tighter curve at the top. The bottom is the bigger curve, the longer curve. So um, that is what we are attaching the bias tape to. And I'm going to, again, do this on the outside or the um, wrong side first because it just makes it easier and a little neater looking to do the second pass <laughs> on the right side because I don't care what it looks like on the wrong side. All right, so I'm just going to be following along here and stitching in that um, fold that I created when I made my tape. closed somehow. All right. And I'm leaving just some excess on either end. That's easy to cut off later. All right, so now I'm just going to go make sure I caught, yeah, I think it looks good that I caught everything. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. And if you have any areas where it was kind of thick, like I got a little thick there, you may want to trim those off just so 
when you are flipping everything right sides together. Because I do have turn of cloth here um, because this is thick fabric, which means it takes up some of the length. So I actually may go. I'm just going to trim. I'm trying to trim. I, I My goal here is trimming just the facing seam allowance. I don't really want to trim my bias tape seam allowance. I mean, it's fine if it happens, but... I've made a horrible mess. All right. So sometimes that just helps with the folding things over. So now we can fold that over and it'll be good. Okay. So now we're going to do another pass this time with the right side up. And I'm just going to fold that to where it covers up the stitching line, the previous stitching line. And that fold that you pressed in earlier should make this work nice and neatly. And I'm just kind of edge stitching that. bound edge. So I'm just going to cut off my bias tape flush with the ends, um, mostly because um, we're going to be losing, you know, the fronts, these ends anyway. Oh my gosh, that cord. It's all fun and games till you cut through your microphone cord. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this over and give it a good press and then I'll meet you back here and we're going to attach our facing to our pants. Okay, we've got a beautiful facing all ready to be put into our gathered up pants. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, so what we are going to do is match our facing, and I'm going to start at center back, because um, you should have notches marked, and I've got my center back notch, is that my center back notch? I think it is, marked here, which is going to go the center back of my pants, and um, I'm going to there we go. Start at center back and then work to the front, but I will, you know, stretch things as they go. So I'm only going to mark like my my side seams where I want things to match up. And then I will just pull the pants to match the facing. If that makes sense. Now up here it gets a little tricky. Okay, you also want your zipper tape completely out of the way. I don't want, we don't want that anywhere near. I'm actually just going to pull this taut here. I'm actually going to, I've got excess elastic in here. Don't need that little piece. All right, and this gets folded back like so. That's the way it was basted. I'm just going to pin that. 
zipper tape out of the way. This is the uh, right side when worn. I'm just going to pull this taut so I can kind of see where that should go. Because my notches will match up a little bit on the front, but not really because I don't have my, my dart. All right, and then with this excess, it gets wrapped around the edge that you have. Um... Oh, wait a second. Sure, we're doing this right. Okay. Hold on. I wasn't doing that right. Because that extends past. Because on your right wind worn side, it does, it's the underlap, so it does extend past. Okay. All right. So we want our zipper out of the way. We don't want that bothered, but I am going to wrap this around to the wrong side, like so. We probably don't need that much, but I think it'll be okay. This is thick fabric and I want it to be okay. So I've wrapped it around that, um, basically around the teeth. So this is the right one worn, so this is the underlap. Um, and I've wrapped that around the teeth. And again, my teeth though, I'm not gonna be stitching, I don't wanna stitch those down. Those are still roaming free. All right, so now we're gonna go to the other side, center back. We'll match our side seams. It's gonna be the same thing. Match our side seams. Same thing. I want the zipper tape completely out of the way. I am gonna just pin this. Hold that just a wee bit tighter than I really should have, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so it's like that. And again, we can fold it back on itself. So that will wrap around that outside edge, um, but again, I want my teeth out of the way. So I've pulled those down. I mean, we're pretty much, we're not like super close to where the teeth are, but just you don't wanna accident, accidentally get those caught um, where you're stitching. Okay, so now we need to sew this down. And I actually wanna sew this, I think, well, no, I do wanna sew it with the, pant, with the pants up and this facing down, I think. So I want to make sure I'm stitching on the same line that I sewed in my elastic. Okay. So now we're just going to sew this, the facing to the top of the pants, and I'm going to try and stitch, and, I, and you may have to like finger press that, um, you don't have to worry about zipper tape either. Finger press that elastic open because it's probably going to want to um, taco on itself and I am just stitching again right on that same stitching line where I sewed this down and I just want to make sure that I've got my facing and we're just gonna go so slow
myself enough room here for the... There we go. Phew! Okay. There we go. We have the facing attached. Now we're going to flip everything up. We're going to understitch. Um, I'm going to turn these wrong side out real quick because I just think it's easier to um, understitch from the right side and I want to sew in the circles. So. <laughs> Such is the nature, turning things right side out, wrong side out. Then we'll turn them back again to sew the facing down. All right, which we're not quite to that point yet. Okay, so now I want to understitch everything. Again, make sure my zipper tape is out of the way. Oh, didn't mean to start quite so quickly. All right, so now I'm just making sure with my thumb that um, my seam allowances are all going towards my facing. And just going a little at a time. Because again, there's that elastic in there, so we want to make sure everything's lying flat. Nothing's getting caught weird. Got my seams jogged a little bit there, but that's okay because that's going to be on the inside of the pants. You'll never be able to see it. So if that sort of thing bothers you, you could just let it go on this one. Oh, look at that join though. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Again, no one's going to see it, so I'll know that's there. <laughs> but I'm not so caught up on it that I'm going to fix the other one. set these aside for a bit. Um, actually, what you can do now is take these over to your ironing board and turn the um, facing to the inside of the pant and go ahead and just pin it down um, around the outside. We're going to be messing with the fly now and the fly shield, but you could go ahead and do that and that would be ready. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with steam, the whole waistband with steam, um, get things pinned in place, and then I'll meet you back here to do the fly shield. Okay, before we get to the fly shield, we're going to do sew some of this down. All right, so on our left one worn, so this is the overlap side, I've gone ahead and I've pinned the whole thing in place and um, uh, given it a good press, but we're going to remove some of these. We're going to remove this pin. Okay, so on our left one worn, so our overlap, we're going to trim. Remember, we stopped sewing um, like the two inches. I'm going to trim this, and I'm using crappy scissors here like three-eighths to a quarter of an inch. We're just going to cut it off. And I know someone's going to say, oh, but the tape... Oh, oh, also make sure your pull is down. You don't want to accidentally cut your pull off. I have done that. 
<laughs> we'll just leave it at that. I have done that. All right, now I'm going to put my pen back in. Okay, so that's all tucked in nice and neat on that side. On the other side, though, we're going to leave that. We're only going to top stitch. We're going to stop, I don't know, like two inches. Two inches seems to be a good number <laughs> away from the front because things are going to start getting um, tucked in. And actually, we can go ahead and cut this zipper tape off and cut it off um, right at the fold at the top of the waistband. That's a pretty good spot. Okay. Um, this is actually going to get turned at a 45 degree angle and it's going to get kind of tucked in there, but like so, well, I guess we could go ahead and do this and no, no, we can't do this yet because I also want to tuck in the fly shield. Okay. So we're going to go all the way around the pants and we're going to stop about two inches away from this side, but we can go ahead and sew this side, the left one worn side down. Okay. Ooh, about lost my good scissors there. Okay, so we're going to start, and I'm going to sew with the pants against the feet dogs. So again, I've pressed everything nice and neat, um, and I'm going to try and stitch. I'm going to start like right there. So right on that previous stitch line when I stitched down the um, bias tape. And we're going to go slow, especially when we're coming around the other side, because uh, we don't want to accidentally, you know, push the pocket, especially open. We'll be coming off of the pocket going this way. But when we go, we get around to the other side, um, we don't want to accidentally get something folded up. So we're just going to go slow. Get as close as we can to that stitching line. It's fine if it's not perfect. Also, okay, we are, no, we're not, not yet, <laughs> still on the back. Um, this fabric is from Distashify, and the gal that sold it to me also sent me, she must have purchased the thread that matches it um, when she bought the fabric, so she sent that in the package as well, and this thread, I mean, it's like a perfect match. You can hardly see that top stitching. It's really well done. Which is kind of nice because usually with top stitching you don't want to do a lot of starting and stopping, if any at all. Um, but you you have to do some start. You have to start and stop on this one. Okay, we are coming around to the pocket, and I just want to make sure. So see, my pocket is like pulled open. That is exactly what we don't want to happen and get something pinched weird. So you just want to make sure everything is lying properly. And again, as we come up on this side, we can sew all the way to the end. Now you want to be careful. I have nylon teeth, which usually are fine for... Um, for sewing over. I usually don't have an issue, but I am going to go slow and definitely use that hand crank if you feel like you need to. So that's going to act as a zipper stop on this side. Okay, now what we can do to finish this off is I mean, this is going to get a buttonhole, obviously. 
maybe not obviously, <laughs> but I am going to edge stitch on the end here to sew this up. And then also, I'm going to finish the top stitching. And it's going to go ahead on up. So that, uh, my buttonhole is going to go right here in, in that box. Just trim some strays. All right. So now we need to deal with the other side of the zipper where we haven't finished that yet. Um, this crease here is from where we basted it and then pressed it open. This will press out. <laughs> um, we'll get there in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside though for a minute so we can sew our um, facing. So let me put these aside and I'll meet you right back here with the face with the uh, fly shield. Okay, here's our fly shield. So this gets sewn completely differently than normal because we have to seal up all edges um, because the this doesn't get caught up in the edge of a waistband. All right, so I'm going to turn this right sides together and we're going to sew um, half inch seam allowance um, over here, down, leave a gap, pick it up, and then sew the end because we're going to turn it through like you would a pillow, basically. So we're going to start at one end. So yeah, we have to finish off the top as well as the bottom. Leave a nice little gap that'll get edge stitched closed here in a second. All right, so now we are going to Trim to like half the width. And you'll notice I'm leaving the area that we left open, I'm leaving that seam allowance intact. So I just kind of cut down into that seam allowance. So you see that little jog there. Just make sure you catch it when, <laughs> when you go to turn everything. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it right side out. This is nice and thick fabric too. So you'll probably wanna use any kind of knitting needle or whatever to get your corners all nice and pressed out. Okay, so I am going to go use a double pointed knitting needle to press out my corners and give it a good press and tuck this um, excess seam allowance under while I do it. And I will meet you right back here. Okay, so here is our little piece here. We've got a hole, obviously. So I'm going to do an edge stitch just down this side um, to catch all of that in. All right, there we go. All right, now we're going to insert this into the pants. We're so close, guys. Okay, now everything just gets kind of flinagled in. Now, in her instructions, she tells you you can go ahead and mark, like with disappearing ink, um, like a Frickson pen or whatever, five eighths of an inch um, in from this longer edge. Um, I mean, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. But basically, you just want it, it will come right below. I'm sorry, here, let me raise this so I can be in frame. We're gonna slide this in, because we've got this not sewn down yet, right underneath that fold, like so. And we want it in just so that it just covers that zipper tape that's there. But before we do any of that, we want this excess zipper that's not sewn down, we're gonna fold that at a 45 degree angle and tuck it in there. I 
I mean, it's kind of fussy, but it works. And that fold there is going to keep your zipper pull from going flying off. Okay. So once we have this, you can put a pin if you'd like. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to turn these inside out. It's going to be easier to sew. I wish I would have decided this before <laughs> finger pressing all that in. Okay. All right. All right. It's just easier to have the back out of the way. Okay. <laughs> so everything is right as it should be. And now I am just going to set this down and I'm going to edge stitch and try and stitch right on that previous line of stitching right there. But we're going to start here at the top. Now, I need to lower it now. As we are doing this, we want to be very careful that um, we don't break a needle. I mean, we're fine at this point. Hold on. But see, already this is wanting to not, although I guess it's fine. That's folded nicely. Okay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay. So as we get close, just go ahead and crank that hand wheel just to be on the safe side. And then the idea, because we have this fly shield back here, is that we want it pretty equal um, all the way down. Also, that line that we marked will go away as soon as I hit that with some steam. And again, um, or maybe not again, but we've got, it's the longer side that's tucked in over here. The shorter side of the fly shield is on this side. Just get down as far as you can go. You're not going to be able to go all the way down. But there we go. Okay, that is secured. So now, like here's the back, we, it's, it's kind of flapping open, but that's okay, because we're going to zip up our pants, and I want things turned right side out again. Do I? Mm, maybe not. Just turn them fully wrong side out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to zip my pants up. And they'll only, that's the other thing, they're only going to go as high, like they're not going to go to the top of this side of the zipper tape anyway. That's just the nature of the facing. They stop here, it stops here at the facing. So you're not going to have to worry about losing anything, um, your pull or anything. And everything, you're going to have your buttonhole here and then a button up here and everything's going to fasten or a hook and bar. But before we do anything else, we want to do some bar tacking, which basically we're going to... Um, do some stitching down here at the base to stitch this fly shield. Um, just tack it down here at the bottom. Okay, and this is what we would do if we were doing a regular fly. So I'm just gonna slide this under here. So make sure everything's nice and flat, but I can feel my um, fly shield that's under there. So we're just going to do a little bar tack. And for me, that's just going to be, you could do a little zigzag. I'm just going to do a few uh, in place stitches here and then I'll trim my errant threads. I think I'm going to do some here at the base too, just to secure everything nice and neatly. And then we want to do some tacking right here where our pockets attach because this can this can easily, you know, you're in your pocket a lot. We want that to be nice and secure. So I'm just going to sew over that little bit. Three times on each side. Okay. 
Okay. We are so close to being done, folks. This is so exciting. Okay. <laughs> the only thing we need to do now um, is put a, a fastening of some sort, whether that's a button and buttonhole, which is what I'm going to do for this pair, or that might be a hook and eye, and I will show you that. But I'm going to go to my other sewing machine, my new Bernina, and um, put in the buttonhole. We're going to show you how to do that. But now is also a good time to try your pants on, and you can go ahead and hem if, and I showed you how to do that already, but if you haven't done that, you can go ahead and hem now as well. So let's go get our button and buttonhole on, and then we've got pants. Okay, we're going to put in a buttonhole. This is my new Bernina. Um, well, it's a used Bernina, but it's new to me. <laughs> Um, and so I have a different foot. So basically I put my button here at this foot and then just decide how big I want my buttonhole. Um, make it a little bit bigger. It makes it easier to get things on and off, especially using a lot of fabric. And then I just put this where my, the start of the buttonhole. So my other machine started at the bottom of the buttonhole and went up. This one starts at the top. And so we're just going to go, I want to go in a little bit because I don't want it too close. I think I've got the right size needle in there. All right. So now what I do, it's going to be hard to see, but this little red thing, it matches up to a notch up here as it works. So we've got, I've got it on uh, stitch 10, which is the buttonhole stitch on this. So I wait till this red thing meets the red thing on the foot, and then I hit that button. And I'm only making one buttonhole here, but if I were doing like a shirt with multiple buttonholes, um, it would remember that and do that same. I only have to do that, um, hit the button once. But these make such nicer buttonholes than my old machine. Sorry, I think I just totally hit the microphone. That's probably loud. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, <laughs> so now I'm just going to hit it with some fray check on either side, zip it up. Um, I need to hit that with the iron still. Figure out where my button goes, and I'm going to put my button on also with my machine. It's just as a zigzag stitch. I lower the feed dogs and do a zigzag stitch, and we're finished. So there you have it, guys. That is the end of the Upland um, Trouser Sew Along. I, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't know what our next sew along is going to be yet. Um, I have some ideas, so um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe a dress. We're coming into the warmer weather. That might be kind of fun. Anyway, that's all I have for today. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see your all's uplands. I hope you guys give this one a try.